January 14, 2011, in this apparently soulless warehouse outside the city of Bologna, the premiere of a historical event is taking place. For the first time, an audience of journalists and scientists can watch a test of the energy catalyzer, a small device that defies the laws of physics and produces energy, a lot of energy. One man only knows the secrets of this mysterious device. His name is Andrea Rossi. Everything starts with coal fusion, Rossi told us, when in March 1989, Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pons announced that they were able to create the sun in a glass, I was very excited. I tried to repeat the experiment, but without success. In the end, Rossi gives up on Fleischmann and Pons' palladium and deuterium, and he decided to try it with nickel and hydrogen. Two Italian physicists, Francesco Piantelli and Sergio Focardi, had had the same idea. Well, it was a very interesting meeting because it came at a time in which uh, I had given up uh, any research activity. It was an accidental meeting in the street. Focardi was holding a newspaper in his hands and said, have just made a crazy man. He wants to produce energy. Then we found out that he wasn't crazy at all. In fact, energy was produced. I approached him uh, to ask him to refute my hypothesis, telling him I'll pay the counseling in order for him to explain to me why this cannot work, so that I can set my mind at rest and stop it. It seemed uh, that Rossi at the time had lost the hope to make it work. But uh, after a conversation and an analysis of the documents, he urged me to go on, and that's what we did. For two years, Sergio Focardi and Andrea Rossi met regularly in a makeshift laboratory in Bondeno, close to Ferrara. Their joint effort seems to bear fruits. Focardi kept on giving us results which were more and more thrilling, with uh, energy multiplier factors which were increasingly higher. We were all rather curious. He brought new ideas, those that uh, allowed to get energy in a very concrete way. How did you figure out the idea of these secret additives? Well, it was 10% of intuition and 90% of perspiration. I mean, I tried thousands of reactors and thousands of different combinations until I found the one that worked. The energy catalyzer is ready for its first public appearance. The experimental device is loaded with one gram of nickel powder and with a small quantity of high-pressure hydrogen. Andrea Rossi starts the machine Electric power runs through a coil that heats the reactor. In a few minutes, temperature rises at 100 degrees, turning the water that surrounds the system into steam. Giuseppe Levi, physicist from the University of Bologna, certifies that within one hour, the energy catalyzer produced 10 kilowatts of power, a 30-fold increase compared to the energy used. Laws of physics and chemistry cannot explain how the production of such a big amount of energy is possible. We conducted our measurements, we repeated them, we checked that there were no hidden wires and batteries. Now, all the experimental evidence points out that the device is working. The fuel that the device is using is made of nickel and hydrogen. In 24 hours, the device uses one gram of hydrogen and in 180 days uses about 50 grams of nickel. From an economical point of view, how much does it cost? Well, I don't know how much one gram of hydrogen costs. Maybe one cent of euro and 50 grams of nickel cost 50 cents. I saw it working in December and January. Then we did a technical test at the beginning of February and another one in March. I know that there will be other tests too.
So I would say that uh, if these are the premises, it will work. Bologna University will study the phenomenon to find a viable scientific explanation. Andrea Rossi himself will finance the research with uh, 500,000 euros per year. Sergio Focardi, on his hand, has a theory already. Most physicists do not believe in our results. Maybe they think that we're not able to make experiments, but we are sure we can do it. Did you understand what type of process is behind the phenomenon? Yes, I did. The first thing I realized, that given the energy that was developed, was that the process had to be nuclear and not chemical. What does it happen? Do nickel and hydrogen fuse together? That's right. The hydrogen nucleus, that is the proton, penetrates nickel nucleus and when the proton enters the nickel nucleus it becomes copper and releases energy. But we still do not know how that happens. What kind of innovation did Andrea Rossi introduce to obtain these results? We added a secret additive, whose formula is confidential, uh, to the system formed by hydrogen and nickel. I do not know this additive, I have never asked anything about it, and I do not want to know anything about it, but I know that it facilitates the process. Without the, adi the additive, the process would be less... What happens exactly inside the reactor of the energy catalyzer is not clear yet, but Mr. Rossi does not intend to waste any time. He wants to market his invention, a low-cost energy source ready to be used. It is a unit that can be connected with other units, with uh, 300 units connected to each other. We obtain a super unit of about one megawatt uh, we are starting a mass production and from November the product will be on the market. How much will it cost? The devices cost about $2,000, which is 1,200-1,300 euros for each kilowatt installed, whereas energy costs uh, less than one cent per kilowatt hour. Andrea Rossi's patent application reads 20 08. However, in 1995, Professor Piantelli from the Siena University had patented something very similar. His device was the result of years spent in research carried out together with Sergio Focardi. Previous patents take into consideration the possibility of rejection. Rossi's idea is clearly described in the Focardi Piantelli patent that dates back to 1998. The point is that since something similar already exists, then the patent will not be granted. This is what I think and what European examiners will think. The patent would allow us to publish those documents that are now classified because of the industrial secret. We would be protected if the patent is not granted, we keep the industrial secret, but our research will not stop for sure. If the patent is granted, Mr. Rossi can claim his intellectual and industrial property rights and might also ask for royalties. He would also be allowed to bestow exploitation contracts. If, on the contrary, the patent is not granted, the subject will be public and people can make whatever they want with it. How much money have you invested in the project? I cannot answer the question, unfortunately. All I can say is that we have invested all our money on this project. So far I have been involved personally, that's for sure. But who is this man that promises to change the world? Andrea Rossi, 60, from Milan, has a degree in philosophy. He inherited his passion for engineering from his father, who has a machine shop. Still very young, he makes headlines with an intuition that makes Italy dream. 
We are in the 70s and austerity and the oil crisis underway. Back then, uh, Rossi was in close contact with Politecnico, especially the department that was studying this process and already had the patent. They also founded a magazine called Ambiente, Environment. Many people used to write for the magazine. Rossi set up this plant in Caponago where liquid waste had to be turned into oil. Andrea Rossi promises to turn waste into oil, and this earns him the title of Brianza Schiek. In Caponago, north of Milan, rises the plant that within a few years collects tons of industrial waste. The most important companies from northern Italy are in business with Petrol Dragon, but something goes wrong. Actually, the plan was never operational because it was too small for the amount of waste that Rossi was able to gather. So even if they had had been granted the patent, the plan would have not been large enough. There have been some legal complications. Uh, the materials we were processing have been classified as waste. But this defense line has been questioned in many judicial venues and was considered uh, clearly groundless because after many chemical tests, after different seizures of materials, it was demonstrated that uh, it was spent fuel oil with percentages of water which were unacceptable for a product considered as hydrocarbon. And then some customers had uh, huge problems uh, when the products uh, were classified as waste. In that case, the customers would have needed the authorizations. But these are things which belong to my past and uh, which have nothing to do with what we are talking about at the moment. And so I kindly ask you not to go on, considering that uh, that was an experience in which I clearly made some mistakes, which cost me a lot. But now, please, that's enough. Rossi uh, basically took a series of old and misused refineries where there are big containers, huge storage containers, and stocked the waste collected in all these old refineries scattered uh, all around Italy. The largest one was the one of La Chiarella, and he left the waste there without treating it. This is the former Omer refinery within the La Chiarella municipality. When Petrol Dragon closed up uh, shop, it left behind 57,000 tons of toxic waste. There were some leaks in the bottom of the reservoirs and therefore the ground was uh, permeated and uh, consequently the underground water was polluted. That's to say the first water layer above the water layer from which we can take drinkable water. It was necessary to reclaim the land and plow the land, take the waste which was in the ground of uh, La Chiarella, and then bring it to waste disposal plants in Germany. Up to date, the drainage cost around uh, 22 million and 500,000 euros. Now, to have a land which can be devoted to a possible public use, a complete reclamation of the land is needed, which will cost around 9 million euros. Andrea Rossi has been repeatedly condemned by many tribunals for illegal disposal of uh, hazardous and toxic waste, fulfilled without the regional authorization. He was condemned by the then magistrate's courts, by the magistrate of Lecco and the magistrate of Monza, by the magistrate of Milan and the magistrate of Turin. From a point of view of resume, you can see that I devoted my life to energy and to installations in the field of energy. In the years where he was working here, he didn't produce a single drop of oil, as far as we know. What it did was creating just a media event. He was able to persuade, in a way that I cannot explain, a good portion of public opinion, and that's exactly what is hard for me to explain. 
he persuaded technicians of the field, scientists and important institutions such as the region of uh, Lombardia, that he was able to do magic. Petrol Dragon is the past, but the present and maybe the future is Energy Catalyzer. March 29th, 2011, two authoritative Swedish physicists flew to Bologna from Stockholm. The president of the Royal Swedish Academy of Science, Sven Kullander, professor of theoretical physics and president of the Swedish Skeptics Society, Hanno Essen. Rossi prepared a smaller device, more stable one. It is a test which is fundamental to evaluate the reliability of the system. For almost six hours, energy catalyzer produced energy in front of the two Swedish physicists. Have you been Were you impressed by the test conducted in Bologna? Yes, because you produce something, uh, uh, you, you produce power that cannot be explained according to my opinion by chemical processes. We have here some uh, source of energy that, that seems to be radically new and uh, very stable and uh, reliable also, as opposed to many other uh, cold fusion experiments they they have been very vague and difficult to reproduce do you think that the reaction taking place in the reactor is a nuclear one yes uh, that's what i believe i mean i i have been convinced that we have uh, an energy production which is hard to explain by other means can you exclude the use of tricks in the device uh, not entirely I don't suspect any trickery. I mean, none of us have found any trace, any signs of trickery, even if I admit that we have never checked everything. The Swedish scientists also couldn't see the core of uh, Rossi's device. Nobody, including Professor Focardi, knows the additive secrets introduced by Rossi to turn a reaction which produced few watts into a high energy reaction. Rossi says he uses a powder of enriched nickel in which probably there are more isotopes with greater atomic numbers close to that of copper. Sven Kulander analyzed a sample of the nickel powder that according to Rossi was used for two months and a half inside the energy catalyzer. He found out that 10% was made of copper. How do you explain the presence of copper in the ash? Well, it could... Uh... If it had not been put in, it or if it could have been, uh, well, I don't know, it could, if it's such some surrounding copper and it had been lost, it would be, it would be too, too much probably to, to be that. Otherwise, it should be a nuclear process that the nickel captures a proton and it then forms uh, uh, copper. For, for Rossi and other people, maybe the, the, the way, the fact that it works is the, is the most important, of course, but... Uh, to understand the science, because it's very mysterious at this point. Uh, I don't understand it, and I don't know anyone who does, really. Do you think Andrea Rossi understands what happens in the reactor? Uh, no, I don't think he understands it more than uh, many others. <laughs> but when he tries to explain to us how he, how he understands it, uh, we, no, I, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, talks about pressure and so on. It's, uh, it's interesting, but uh, very heuristic and a bit intuitive. Uh, I think he has ma is mainly a practical guy. <laughs> if, there is a nuclear if there is a real Rossi nuclear fusion, Rossi and Focardi would deserve to win the Nobel Prize, don't you think so? Yeah, that's, uh, I, I, uh, it has of course to be evaluated and seen how um, but I, I mean, if, if this uh, this is so fantastic, so if uh, I, I think I could agree to that, it's such a fantastic discovery. If it's true, I, I, it's hard for me to believe it because it's against all my physics uh, uh, physics knowledge so far. Waiting for an academic recognition, Andrea Rossi is working on the commercial launch of Energy Catalyzer, which should be not far off. The surprise is that Athens will be the capital of the new energy world order. Why is Greece so advanced in the field? We're still good. Although the financial problems of Greece, we're still good. We believe we know international markets. OK, 
Okay, we have experience. And uh, we are the first ones who believe to Rossi and his product. The October event will refer to a one megawatt uh, uh, plant which will be inaugurated at our facilities in Xanti to furnish our energy needs. However, we will also use it as a, as a presentation or as a, as a, as a showcase for future, uh, future potentially interested parties. Is Energy Catalyzer ready for the market? We have the final products in our, a product in our hands. Not the experimental one. Exactly the one that we are going to produce. It works. It works excellent. Actually, the device, what we are going to uh, sell or, let's say, provide, there's a light, slight distinction between selling and, and providing in our terms, is going to be a 10 kilowatt uh, device producing solely heat. How much will it consume in terms of fuel and money? Actually, uh, the uh, end user, uh, again, speaking about households, in the first place, will have no other, let's say, charges or, or costs except for the the said lease, uh, lease, uh, leasing fee, because uh, we will uh, provide all the ingredients within this, this uh, device. How many devices will you rent out? Well, as many as we can produce. <laughs> so we can, as a, a rule, of, uh, rule of thumb, we can uh, we assume uh, a final, at full capacity, of course, uh, output a factory of uh, around 300,000 units per year. A factory already in production, tools still on paper. Defcalion Green Technologies seems to have real intentions. In few months, it wants to put on the market hundreds of thousands of energy catalyzers. But who's behind the company? Uh, Defcalion is funded by a group of uh, non-governmental entities. It's not just private investors, but they are entities uh, also in industry, but they are non-governmental and they're international. Well, there is a group of investors, I, would, I have to tell you about 10 names, which I am not allowed to say yet. Uh, okay. They come from different parts of the world, representative interests from different types of uh, different uh, parts of the world, actually. Uh, but How much money will be invested in the project? Well, uh, to cover uh, Greece and uh, Balkans, we estimated about 200 million. We believe that Greece will be the pathfinder of another government for other countries. I believe it 100% and our investors believe it 100% and of course if you see the messages we are getting all over the world they believe it 100%. Uh, there are several countries, important countries, who are already requesting to work and buy the product for us. A great revolution, if it really works. There are still too many secrets, industrial and commercial ones, which prevent full evaluation of the scope of Andrea Rossi's invention. Can we believe him? Uh, Hard-working, intelligent, uh, creative uh, person, knowledgeable, careful. I, I, he's, he's an impressive person. As far as I know him, he uh, was a very nice man. Uh, was very charming. I mean, uh, he could uh, sell his products very well. He was definitely very intelligent, a genius. I would say that Andrea Rossi is a picturesque character. Mr. Rossi is uh, uh, the type for me of the professor. He's very solid on what he's saying and at the end of the day he proved uh, not only one time, several times what he's saying is right. You know, he invented a system uh, to make money which is detrimental for the community. He is a man that uh, suffered a lot in Italy, but despite that, uh, he is bringing back his discovery to Italy.